word Jack Mormon? Jack Mormon. No. It's a, it's a somebody who calls themselves a Mormon, but they don't live out the Mormon life. They're just live in Salt Lake City and their family's all Mormons. And so they just call themselves Mormons. That's a Jack Mormon. I want to tell you the difference today between what the world says radical Christians, what we say radical Muslims. I want to tell you where all this started. I used to think that I was a radical Christian until I got deep into the Word of God and found out that in God's eyes, I'm just a Christian. Because being radical in the eyes of the world is what God expects out of us as normal. You know, so, uh, so I think that if, if we now know what the term Jack Mormon is, the, the term Jack Christian would apply to many, if not most, of those people who say that they are Christians. And Muslims is the same way. There's a lot of people that say that they've got good Muslim friends. Well, here, I want to tell you the truth. If somebody is a real Muslim and believes the Quran and lives that book out, they're radical in our eyes. Because that book calls for them to kill us. That's why it's, it's hard for me to believe that the VA hospital is hiring Muslim doctors. Amen. Who, if they believe their book, they're there to kill us. So what we call radical Muslims is simply true to the Quran Muslims. The others that are good people, if they, they don't believe the Quran or they wouldn't be the way they are, they wouldn't be nice to us because the Quran tells them to kill us. And so they're not adhering to the, to the book that they call, that calls themselves Mormon or uh, uh, Muslims. There, most of the world is uh, occupied by people that don't really hold true to their faith or what they call their faith. Christ, whether it's Christians, whether it's Mormons, whether, whether it's, you know, there's only a few. God said in his word that only a few are going to enter in. Many will say to me on that day, but Lord, I cast out demons in your name and in your name perform many miracles. And Jesus said, I'm going to tell them, depart from you, depart from me, you doers of iniquity. What? That means the showboaters and all these people who are doing it for the fame aren't pleasing God at all. So I want to be and I want you to be a group of people that will say, yes, Lord that the world would call you a radical Christian because you believe this book and you live this book. That's my goal, sitting here. Yeah. And so, I want to tell you where this Muslim Christian thing started. And uh, if you've got your bulletin, uh, you can look at it. And uh, why do ma radical Muslims hate us? And it should be why do real Muslims hate us. But for, for our uh, information, we'll call them radical Muslims. It all starts in Genesis chapter 15. This is going to reveal the truth to you as far as scripture why they hate us. In Genesis 15, 1 to 6, it says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. He says, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your very great reward. God is our reward. He's what we're doing this whole thing for, living out this Christian life on earth. 
our reward is heaven. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. So here, here, is, here is Abram talking to God about why God's plan can't work. And so then God speaks and makes correction. That's what God always does. Even in the word of God, in the Bible, God brings correction. It's just, do we want to receive correction? It all boils down to that. This man will not be your heir. But a son coming from your own body will be your heir. Now he's an old dude. Way old, right? And so he's thinking, oh my gosh, I mean, can God even pull this off? Believe me, God can do anything. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Now, guys, remember, Abram has never had kids. And God is telling him that the stars in the sky are going to be like your kids. Now, he had to be a man that actually believed God, you know. But this would even make me, you know, uh, question something. I mean, am I really hearing God or am I hearing a, a nightmare? Abraham believed the Lord. And he accredited it to him as righteousness. Abraham believed God. And because of that, was considered to be a righteous man. See, because if you believe something, you live it out. Right? And so, in Genesis 16, Sarai, his wife, didn't trust God, you know, especially when she heard this news. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian maidservant named Hagar. So she had a maid, and uh, when I think about this maid, she must have been some young thing, right, in childbearing years. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. That's not true. Don't blame it on God. And she says to her husband, go sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Now God said that he was going to build the offspring. And now, see, what happens when we take matters in our own hands? We can do everything that we can, and we still can't do God's will. We can't get done what God can get done. Abram agreed to what Sarai said, you know. That aren't we that, that, you know, here you got this sweet young thing, and he's an old dude. And his wife is saying, I want you to go be with her so we can have a family. So Abram, after been living in Canaan 10 years, so after Abram had been living in Canaan for 10 years, Sarah, his wife, took her Egyptian maidservant and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Now, you, you know what, you get, I know that's why I don't understand how the old Mormons ever made it. We got a whole bunch of wives. <laughs> you get a whole bunch of women in the kitchen, there's going to be some problems, right? Well, now she hates the one who couldn't have the babies. She's thinking that she is all that now. Then Sarah, I said to Abram, you are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. She blames it on him, even though she's the one who told him to do it, right? I put my servant in your arms, and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. <laughs> my goodness, isn't that, isn't that something carnal, right? Your servant is in your hands, Abram said. I want nothing to do with this anymore. I'm tired of hearing it. 
do with her whatever you think best. Remember, this girl's pregnant with Abram's baby, and he's throwing her back into the to the nest of hatred and said, you do with her whatever you want, even though she's got my baby. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar because she could. She'd been given permission from her husband. Deal with her the way you want to. So she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was a spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? As if he didn't know, right? God tells us a lot of things, so we will admit it. God already knows everything, but he wants us to verbalize. That's why he loves to hear us pray. God already knows what's in our hearts, but he wants to hear it come out of our mouths. And she says, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. Now, guys, this wasn't very good news, you know, because she had been abused as a pregnant woman by Abram's wife. And he's telling her to go back. The angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. You see, God said for Sarai to have the baby. But Sarai and Abram chose a plan apart from what God said. And guys, if you choose a different route other than what God says, it's going to be trouble. It's just going to be trouble. But he, this angel is telling him now, out of, out of this baby, going to be a whole lot of babies born. You know. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now with child, and you will have a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for, for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. It's a bad thing when you change God's plan, guys. Now we've got a generation of haters born, the sons of Ishmael. Muslims are the sons of Ishmael. Are you starting to see why they hate us? Because although Ishmael was the firstborn, he wasn't God's chosen one. And back then, the firstborn meant a lot. But let's check it out what he says now. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke, she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Bir Lahai Roy. It's still there between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abram a son. And Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son she had been born. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. 86 years old. God reaffirms his promise to Abraham. Remember, God made a promise to Abraham that out of his wife was going to be a child. And the descendants would be like the stars in the skies. So God's going to reaffirm that now. Check it out in Genesis 17, 15 to 19. God also said to Abraham... As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. See, that's starting to become more clear now. Abraham and Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Now remember, it's God's blessing now on the child that he has said Sarai is going to have, not Hagar, even though Hagar uh, 
had the first one, right? The first one. Abraham fell face down. <laughs> we might do that too. He says, he laughed and said to himself. Remember, God knows our hearts. He knows everything. Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarai bear a child at the age of 90? I can kind of relate to this because Judy and I are 10 years apart. So this must be a good thing. Marry somebody 10 years, your junior guys, okay? <laughs> Uh, verse 18 says, And Abraham said to God, See, Abraham's firstborn was Ishmael. If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant of his descendants after him. Isaac was the firstborn uh, of, of Abraham that God acknowledged. It was because God said that Sarah was going to raise him up a son. Now, in what I'm considering the sin of Abram in sleeping with, some, with, with another girl and bearing a child by her, apart from God's plan, is, has led to what we experience right now in the world. Total devastation. Total devastation, apart from God's plan, bad things happen. Then Genesis 18, we'll wrap it up here, guys. Then the Lord said, said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. I'm coming back in a year, and guess what? She's going to have a baby. Like I said, Right. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent, which was behind him. Sarah's listening to God talk to Abraham. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years. He was 100 and she was 90. And Sarai was about, was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out, and my master is old, will I know, now have this pleasure? Talking about having his baby? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? He said, God hears everything. Even the stuff in the next room. You know, we think that we'll sneak away and talk. God hears it all. He knows your thoughts. He knows what's in your heart. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. Okay, bottom line. Now, there's two sons here. Ishmael, who was not blessed by God, and Isaac, who was. We are the descendants. Christianity is the descendants of Isaac. Islam is the descendants of Ishmael. See, now you know the point of origin. In the, in the uh, Islamic book, the Quran, it tells them to kill us. And they're just living out what their book says. They are dedicated to their religion. But the, the good ones, the ones we know in our day to day life, they're not dedicated to their religion or they wouldn't be good people. Just like a lot of people who say that they're Christians are not dedicated to Christianity. They just come from the South and the Bible Belt, so obviously they're Christian. Guys, God expects us to listen to what he says and to apply that. Uh, bottom line, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob produced Israel, Christianity. Ishmael produced Arabs, Muslims. But I want to tell you something, that even a Muslim is not beyond the hand of the Lord Jesus. We can't look at them as a people who have been given over to the reprobate mind. 
a lot of those people who are good people that wear their head thing, but they don't go out and kill people, we can reach them with the gospel. I want to tell you something else, even more bizarre. We can reach a terrorist. There's nobody exempt. It's just the ones who don't serve Islam are a lot easier to reach because you can talk to them. To where the other one, he's totally driven on cutting your head off. But that's because that's what their religion calls for. Wouldn't it be amazing if Christians simply did what our religion calls for? We are ambassadors of Christ, guys. And there is a lot of opposition to us. Uh, violence is from Satan. Violence is from Satan. Killing unborn babies is from Satan. Come on, man. You know, you got a human being and you're going to kill it? That's from Satan. Straight up Satan. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? I mean, it isn't about what we say we are. What are we going to do? The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. We're going to be known by what we do. So, ask yourself, God looking down from heaven and seeing what you do, is he happy? You happy? I mean, our lives should be to please God. And all we've got to do is say, yes, Lord, and get out of our own will and into his will. And we'll be blessed. But just like Abram and Sarai implemented their own will, and Abram's first offspring turned out to be a Muslim because it wasn't God's will. Well, how about it, guys? We'll probably never have a, a huge church because people don't want to really hear that. They just want to hear, can't we all just get along? Come on, man. Well, they killed Jesus for what he believed. I'm willing to take that penalty. If, if the one that I serve was willing to give his life for me, how could I not give my life to him? even to the point of death. I'm willing to make that choice. Guys, it's crystal clear why Islam hates Christianity. Because Ishmael hates Isaac. Ishmael was jealous because Isaac was not the firstborn. And yet God said, that's my blessed man. Think about that today. Maybe you want to just take your bulletin hole and go over that again. Guys, it's crystal clear why our, why our world is in such horrible shape. It's because God, God was rejected. And look what happened. You know, look what happened. I'll tell you what, man, as, as far as me in this house, what I'm going to share with you every time I see you is the truth about this book. The tr I can't come up with anything any better than the truth about this book. God wrote this for us, not my opinions. That's why we stay right next to Scripture here at this church. Amen? Let's, let's pray. Father, we stand in awe of you. You're the creator of all things. You spoke this world into existence. How could we not be obedient to you? Lord, we act like our will is more important than your will. Father, may, may that not be so from this day forward, Father. May we consider you in the decisions we make. May what would Jesus do not be just some kind of cliche, but should, we should just think about what would he really do in our circumstances? And we should be willing to take the heat from that. Because Christianity, true Christianity, is not welcome in our world today. But God, our mission is the same as Christians, and that is to represent you 
every day, all day, 24-7, 365. Father, I pray that you would put people in our path that need to hear an encouraging word and give us the words to say, Lord, as we're out there representing you. Thank you for that, Father. And Lord, as we're getting ready to close out this part of our time together today, I pray that uh, you'd bless our offering, Lord, that it would uh, stretch out to meet the needs that you have in this church. And also, Lord, as we're getting ready to eat together, Father, bless our food and bless our fellowship. Cause us to love each other even more, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.